Hi, I'm Mark Anderson. This presentation will demonstrate the Bill of Material and Partmaster Excel interface. The Bill of Materials and Partmaster interface was designed to allow the user to download a single level or indented Bill of Materials from Growth Power. Import that snapshot into an Excel spreadsheet and then edit that Bill of Materials while in the spreadsheet making changes to lines, changing quantities, adding start and stop dates, adding new lines, deleting lines, etc. Once the user was finished making changes to that bill of materials in the spreadsheet, then those changes are uploaded from the spreadsheet back up into GrowthPower without requiring GrowthPower data entry. This system requires only Reflection for Windows and Microsoft Excel. It does not require ODBC, Quiz, or any other database does not require a heavy IT effort at all. Indeed, once the programs are installed, the system was designed to allow the user to operate it entirely on their own. The Bill of Material in Partmaster Spreadsheet allows the user to edit and maintain any of the following. A single level Bill of Materials for a given parent, an indented Bill of Materials for a parent, all of the bills of material associated with a single level where used for a given part number and to enter and maintain new or existing part masters. The system provides the means for an engineer to create a bill of material structure offline making changes, additions, deletions, uh, evolving the bill of material, gaining approval if necessary, reviewing it with other members of the staff then releasing it to Growth Power and to Growth Power's MRP system only when it's ready to be released. The Bill of Material and Partmaster spreadsheet can remove some of the tedium and help minimize the error potential for maintaining a very extensive or large Bill of Material structure. The spreadsheet allows the user to implement changes to bills of material and part master without performing laborious manual keyboard entry in growth power. Let's take a look at a couple of examples. Over in growth power, the top of the toolbar, you'll see three buttons that have been added to the toolbar. These three buttons control the bill of material snapshot and upload process. Two of the buttons are used to take bill of material and where you snapshots. The third button is used for uploading a completed spreadsheet back to Growth Power. The first snapshot we're going to take is of an indented bill of materials. So we go to the button on the toolbar, click that button, a dialog box will appear informing us that we're about to download and process a bill of material report. When we click on that button, the program takes over and stops at this point asking the user whether they want a single level bill of material or all levels. We're going to select all and press enter. The system will stop again asking for the as of date for the bill of material. We're going to select all. The program will take over and then stop at the part number prompt waiting for the user to provide a part number. We we'll provide that part number. The program takes over again, takes that snapshot, and then provides a dialog box announcing that the uh, process of taking that bill of material snapshot and turning it into an Excel ready file is complete. We'll click OK and then go to the next step. Now we're going to move over to the Excel spreadsheet. First thing we'll need to do is open the enter and maintain bill of material spreadsheet in the current revision. In order to bring that snapshot, to import that snapshot we just made in growth part into the spreadsheet, we'll open the macro menu and select Import Macro, highlight that, and click on Run. The snapshot that we just made over in Growth Power is imported into the spreadsheet in a couple of tabs. The Build Materials snapshot is now fully in the spreadsheet in two tabs. We'll talk about each one of them. Across the top, you see the heading of the report indicating that this is an indented Build of Material and indicating the date and time that the snapshot was taken first two tabs we'll be concerned with are Bill of Material 1 and 2. The Bill of Material 1 tab is sorted in the exact order that you'll find in the indented Engineering Bill of Material report. So if you're familiar with that report, this is exactly the way that it comes out of Growth Power. The Bill of Material 2 tab 
contains exactly the same lines, but they've been resorted. They're sorted first in order of bill of material level, then by the parent part number, and then by the line number. You may edit the spreadsheet in either one of these tabs, and changes you make in either will be uploaded. Now let's make a couple of changes and see how that works. We're going to insert a few rows right here. Simply IR, insert a couple of rows. And let's make a, a change and a deletion. Let's say that we have this part and we want to make a change to it. So I'm going to copy that into this empty space that we made below it. Over on the left hand side of the screen is an action column all of the existing lines in the bill of material come over from the snapshot with that word, with that tag, if you will, saying that they are existing lines. We're going to uh, select from the pull-down menu to make a change. So we're going to change this line uh, and make a different quantity. Note that when we select the change action, certain cells along that row will change color, drawing the user's attention to cells that are important for the action they've selected. Here you have to have a part number, a parent part number to make a change. You have to have a line number, you have to have a line revision, you have to have a component part number, you have to have a quantity, and you may optionally have a start and a stop date. We're going to change the uh, quantity from 1 to 2. The blacked out cells are for company options lead time offset, back flushing, floor stock locations, and time phase material movement that are turned off in the account that we're using for this demonstration. We may also add comments to this line revision indicating why we made the change or other pertinent information. Now let's copy a line for deletion. We'll copy that, move it down again to this empty area. This way, by the way, we've left the existing lines the way they were on the bill, so I know what they were when I started. And I've copied them down here and made these changes, so now I know what these changes are. And if I were really clever, I would save this spreadsheet to a name that I would always be able to keep track of, and hopefully you will do the same. From the pull-down menu, we'll select the delete action, and this line will be deleted. In this case, all we need to delete the line is the parent part number, the line number, and the revision. The other fields that highlighted when we're making a change aren't important to the deletion transaction. You should also note, by the way, we could have accomplished this delete transaction in two different ways. We could have deleted it, as I've done right here, with the pull-down action, or we could have changed the original line, inserted a stop date on it, and would have stopped it. That way we would have retained the history of what the bill of material was up until the point that we stopped using this part on the line. Once we're finished making our changes on the spreadsheet, we're ready to upload this back to Growth Power. That is accomplished by opening the macro menu, selecting Upload from the macro program, and set, selecting Run. The macro will take over and will format this spreadsheet and put it in a form that can be used over in Growth Power to perform the data entry for the changes that we uh, made here on the spreadsheet. Once that's done, we'll switch back over to Growth Power and make those changes.